Yo, what's going on, Tim Boy Squad? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're covering Black Clover chapter 221, and finally, finally, I can give a five star rating to a chapter again because it feels like I've not done it for Black Clover for a few weeks now. But my god, I, I adore this chapter, I absolutely loved it. It had it blew me away. It blew me away at so many moments. I mean, from the comedy moments and everything going on with the confession with Charlotte and Yami, which I did not see coming whatsoever, to the absolutely glorious, absolutely godly cliffhanger that we got. I loved all of it. I loved absolutely every damn moment of it. But I'm going to jump into more of the comedic moments before we actually talk about that huge cliffhanger. Because, I mean, the confession. I adore the confession. I didn't see the confession coming at all. I mean, obviously, we all knew there was something going on between Charlotte and Yami. But it's very unlike a battle shonen to actually jump into that type of territory. So I didn't see an actual confession coming. And part of me thought it was actually going to fully come at one moment. But it didn't. But still... Despite that, Black, uh, Black Clover's gone way further than I ever thought it would do in terms of the making ships canon, especially at this early stage of the series. It sounds weird saying early stage when we're 221 chapters in, but it, it is still the early stage. We're only on the second saga, and we're already diving into relationships, romantic interest between two Magic Knight captains, one of them being our very own boy, Yami. I absolutely loved it. I did not see it coming at all. A round of applause, Tabata. I'm, I'm glad that you're giving romance more of a focal point in the story. Because I don't think many battle shonen out there. Maybe it's just I'm picking a bad bunch. But not many Roman, Roman battle shonen actually dive into romance this at this point in the story usually it's left into like the epilogue right after everything's all wrapped up and there's not a nice te neat little bow on it it was also really nice to see that other perspective of the blue rose uh, magic knights because we've never really seen much of them outside of charlotte and soul and from you know them all being like stereotypical girly girls if that's what you'd like to say to one of them actually having a boyfriend in secret I think all of it was some of Tabata's finest comedy. And although it's sort of a bit like what I was saying in the last chapter, that some of those moments aren't going to be very rememberable, I think this chapter delivered two incredibly rememberable moments. Obviously, like I'll be saying, the confession with Charlotte and Yami and her saying she was going to step down as the captain and then obviously the rest of her Blue Rose Magic Knight members were all saying, yeah, you go, girl, go get that man, go chase him. Yeah, Yami's so cool and he deserves a girl like you and you deserve a guy like him. Despite everything I used to say about guys, it was really nice. Sol is still there, absolutely clueless. No idea really what's going on. I do love Sol. Um, but not just that. Not just that blew me away and was rememberable, but that cliffhanger. We can finally talk about that cliffhanger with Noel. First up, I want to say... Dorothy's back. Proper Dorothy. Not not sleepyhead Dorothy, but the actual real Dorothy Unsworth, which we saw in the Elf Invasion arc. We're finally seeing her properly. And I love her. She's still as enjoyable as she was when we first saw her for those few chapters. And I can't wait to see more of her now in this arc. She was one of the last characters I predicted to be holding any sort of importance in this upcoming arc, let alone entire saga. But as Charlotte brought up her topic of curses, it very quickly changed and shifted to Noel, going to Dorothy to ask her about her parents, more in particular her mother, and what her mother's connection was to the demons which blew me away i could not believe it i was trying to keep a straight face at work while i was reading the chapter on my lunch break and i just couldn't i probably looked like an idiot gasping jaw dropped at the sight of my phone screen but i was i genuinely 100 percent was i can't wait for more i need more it's times like this which i was i was still binge reading black clover but just thinking about noelle's mother a bit because 
She's always felt like a bit of an anomaly in the story. And her death as well, I never really thought much into it. We were always told, you know, she died during childbirth. And it was just sort of left at that. It was sort of like, oh, yeah, she died in childbirth. Sorted. It, it does happen. However, now that we're starting to realise she had a connection with demons, devils, all of that type of jazz, then you immediately start to think that that death was not as simplistic as it is made out to see. There's definitely some foul play going on. There's some fishy business going on with her death now. It doesn't. It no longer looks like a standard just childbirth death. Something unusual went on there. And to think that in this upcoming arc and probably entire saga, we've just had an entire saga to do with elves. Now it looks like we're going to have an entire one to do with curses and probably the devils again and i can't wait because although i may not have liked the word magic devil i'm not completely thrown off of by the devils as a whole i'm still really excited to see some of them and i'm sure the word devil was probably a, a necessary sacrifice to make the rest of them and the whole story revolving them really really interesting so to know that we're going to be getting more and more information with them now as this saga progresses over the next 100, 200, however many chapters it's going to be, it excites me. And it makes me think, what other characters do we not know much about who could potentially be cursed? And immediately, Henry and Gordon come to mind. We know Gordon, we know bits of his backstory, and it was tough. Grey as well, potentially, because a lot of the Black Bulls, you could potentially say, are cursed. And maybe, maybe, they genuinely are all cursed. Asta, we know, is cursed. Noelle has links with her mother, obviously, who has had links with the devils. Maybe she has devil blood within her. Maybe she's cursed, indirectly. Gordon, cursed. Grey, cursed. Henry, very, very evidently cursed. That's a lot of Black Bull members. Yami uses dark magic, which was able to connect to the other world and go through dimensions to attack the devil. Potentially cursed. What if all the Black Bulls... Yami says he just knows a Black Bull when he sees one. Sekre as well is also cursed. And he says the Black Bulls, they're all full of mischievous, mischiefs people. Well, what if there's more to it than them just be, oh, quirky mischiefs? What if they're actually all drawn together because they're all cursed. What if the Black Bulls are all cursed magic knights? I just want to pass it on to you guys because I think Tabata could potentially have been writing an absolute mind-blowing piece of fiction if that ends up being the case and done properly. But I think one thing I want to fi finish off on because I haven't actually gone into any of your guys' comments yet. I do apologise. We'll jump straight into them in a minute. But I want to sort of sit back and semi apologize but also be in awe of what Tabata's done because I kept saying during the Elf arc when I was reviewing the series saying that I'm sort of worried about what our main casts are really going to be like after this arc ended going into the new saga because and I use Noelle as an example because it felt like Noelle's character arc was very rapidly coming to an end she made amends with her brother and all of that and we found out the secret to that her brother was hiding in terms of her actually care him actually caring for her and she became sort of recognized by the silver household again and i thought well that sort of her character arc sort of starts to be all wrapped up and then this happens with her mother the big reveal and the connection to the demons and then suddenly noelle's character it looks like we've not even scratched the surface so Tabata, I take my hat off to you, and at the same time, I apologise for ever doubting your greatness. But anyway, like I was saying, I can't believe I got to do this. I got too, a bit too carried away in, in the hype, but um, it, no surprise, absolutely no surprise. 62% of you guys went with 5 stars, so you're on the same track as me with that. And if we go in, across into some of the comments, let's have a look. And wow, wow, wow. So the comment here that we've got, about this chapter from Karel Chattagoon. I'm quite quite glad you said this because it offers a difference in opinion, which is obviously what I'm trying to get on this channel. And you said it was a mere chapter, which is interesting. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions, as well as everybody else's, but especially yours, Karel, in the comment section down below. 
why you thought it was a mere chapter or if you did enjoy the chapter just leave all your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below as always while i'm at it leave a like on the video as well subscribe if you're not already to become a member of the senpai squad i keep saying i'm pushing it down your throats as much as i can we're trying to hit 3k by the end of the year there's just a few months left a few hundred subscribers we can do this guys we can do this as a senpai squad we've got to smash it let's just smash our goal <laughs> I'll be seeing you guys in another video. But until then, as always, peace. <laughs>